everybody. Maria here from the Tijuana Estuary for Lunchtime Live. Waiting to see if we have an audience at noon. I started it a little bit early because it's a little windy and I just wanted to make sure the audio sounds all right with the wind and the helicopters on this beautiful uh, March 1st day. Hi, Mark. Thanks for joining us for today's lunchtime live. I'm just giving it a few minutes. The sound is good. Okay, good. It is a little windy, beautiful day down here in Imperial Beach at the Tijuana Estuary. Uh, I think the warmest day of this week and then we're about to get a little more winter weather. So we'll just wait a couple minutes to see if anyone else is going to join us. We've got a small audience as we get ready for lunchtime live. And I, uh, for a, a glittering of flying jewelry. <laughs> and uh, hopefully everyone here will know what I'm talking about uh, from experience when we get started. So welcome everyone, it is noon and this is lunchtime live. We're doing this every other week so maybe it's a, our audience hopefully isn't getting smaller from the less frequent episodes, but here we are at the Tijuana Estuary at noon on the on Tuesday, every other Tuesday for Lunchtime Live. My name is Maria and it's been getting close to two years since we started these. So if you have any questions during the live stream, feel free to type them there in the chat. Hi, April. Thank you for joining us. Feel free to type them in as well. Um, if you're watching later the recording, you can type them in and we will uh, do our best to answer those after the fact. So I'm out here. Hi, Bob. Thanks for joining us out here just outside the visitor center. You can see there. Uh, my name is Maria. Uh, in the area of coastal sage scrub and today's subject actually let's see if i can oh there it went <laughs> sorry about that well there it flew off these guys are fast and here's what we're talking about the anna's hummingbird calypti anna hi christina thanks for joining uh hi uh, calypti uh, anna uh, named after the An of Anna Messina, Duchess of Rivoli. <laughs> so, uh, but Anna's hummingbird. And this may be one of the most common hummingbirds, at least out here in the West. Uh, we can see this is like a, sort of a, a medium size, uh, kind of stocky for hummingbirds. If you're familiar with hummingbirds, relatively short beak. Um, I guess for a hummingbird and ooh, ooh, no, well, they may be, I'm in an area where they zip around and this is why I chose this area just outside the visitor center. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, sorry, this is the male, the male Anna's who's seen the male Anna's hummingbird. It's almost unforgettable. Look at this beautiful Ruby, uh, throat and head called a gorg. Gorget, Gorget, am I pronouncing that correctly? It's more than a bib, but more of a baklava, ba, I always want to say baklava, balaclava. So more like a hooded um, uh, rather than the throat. And here we're seeing it uh, in full exposure to the sun where it gives off that, that ruby red coloring. Uh, that is something that is a structure in the feathers. It's not so much the pigment and it's reflected this way when the sunlight is hitting it just right. So if you've seen the male Anna's, um, not in full uh, ruby pink, that doesn't mean it wasn't an, an Anna's. Uh, you see, sometimes it, um, it is, uh, doesn't sh quite fully reflect that. I'm see April saying she's looking at a male's Anna's in her backyard sitting on a ju jujube tree at this very moment. Yes, they are the, a common uh, backyard bird here in the coastal sage scrub too. 
very, like I said, one of the most common hummingbirds. Um, and this is the male, and you can see this one doesn't quite show the emerald green that uh, you'll see across the back, uh, but I mean, you'll see it there. That's also indicative of this flying piece of jewelry. <laughs> um, and when there's, if there are a flock of them, a flock is sometimes known as a glittering. Uh, very appropriate. Uh, but typically you don't see a lot of these together. Maybe a pair, which we'll get into. So the female, she is not quite so uh, glittering, I guess, or quite so uh, bedazzled. There she is. Uh, you can see the iridescent green on the back, but she is lacking in the pigment, uh, or not, I guess, sorry, not pigment, in the structures for um, the throat and the head to reflect ruby. So she's uh, a little less colorful in that way. And there you can see those wings. Uh, this photograph was taken um, capturing those wing beads. So um, their tail can be broad. We don't see it here. They're closed up. Can be broad and their legs are the tiniest little things um, where <laughs> Uh, they can't walk, they can't really hop, you can see here, but they can kind of scooch sideways when needed. So these are birds you'll see perched or flying. Let's see. Okay, and I'm checking for questions. All right, so um, these guys are, are, this species is a New World species. Uh, you find them in Canada. Uh, down in Baja, here in the in the, in in San, Southern California, but even up through the Pacific Coast, inland into uh, you know into Texas, Utah, um, the expanse. So uh, very common, but a new world species of hummingbird. Now, where do we see them? We see, oh they oh sorry they tend to be um, in their habitat very territorial and they don't migrate. So when they find an area, they tend to get established there and they are very territorial. So I think it was April that was saying she sees them in her backyard on a jujube tree. You will see them uh, looking for nectar. These are excellent, uh, you know, potential pollinators looking for nectar in plants, much like um, the Baja snapdragon I'm standing in front of with these red tubular flowers. Maybe you can see them there, but also uh, um, uh, other nectar sources and including eucalyptus. Yes, these birds are found uh, eating eucalyptus, even though that's an introduced species. So, um, and they are found ho like hovering, right? So when you see them, they, they buzz quickly, hover very, very, very quickly, with wing beats of something like 40 to 50 beats per second. This is just hard for me to wrap my brain around, but that's how fast my wing beat is. And you know, sort of captured here with a, I guess a fast sh shutter speed, but really almost uh, from my, my mind, uh, impossible to imagine that, that, that rapid wing beat. Uh, <clears throat> so you see something move quickly, uh, it can definitely an Anna's, or a hummingbird, or, but most common are Anna's. So uh, the not only nectar, they eat not, not only nectar, uh, they do eat some insects. They'll eat some of the white fly. So they're good for, I guess, maybe controlling some white fly in, in your yard, as well as um, some leaf hoppers. So they will take small insects as well. I, di I didn't know that. I thought they were sort of strictly uh, nectar from flowers and um, even sap, sap from a tree. Um, so, you know, if you, a lot of us, oh, there's one. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to capture this. They're, so they're zipping all around. Um, ooh, I don't know if you guys could hear that. So there was a, a, a probably a male chasing a female or uh, two males or, uh, you know, battling out their territory. They really are around, I should be standing the other way. They really are um, around here. Uh, so April says aphids too. Oh, Bob heard that, cool. Yeah, this is, this is like a really uh, great spot for them because of that we have, a, you know, a great source of nectar here. So if you don't wanna, you know, fill a hummingbird feeder, 
plant a little Baja Snapdragon. Um, and behind me is a lemonade berry there, which is a wonderful uh, resource for them for nest building, which, um, uh, which uh, we'll get into. But first, interactions with, humming, with hummingbird interactions. So uh, they're territorial, and, um, but then there's this courtship that happens that's pretty distinct um, and very exciting to watch where the male will fly like 130 feet in the air and you can, you know, thumbs up if you've seen this before, um, where they, a male will fly 130 feet in the air and just plummet down, right? Um, in this in this display uh, as fast you know I, I, I don't know how fast <laughs> but they'll plummet down while the female is watching and when he does this it's through his tail feathers that there's really kind of unique high-pitched sound is made have you heard that yeah I, I don't I I have um, uh, uh, if you've never heard it before and you didn't know that hummingbirds could do that, you may not have any idea what that was. You may think it's something kind of out of this world. But yeah, they will just kind of dive really, really fast with the female watching. And, um, and then the male will chase the female. And I guess if she's uh, impressed, she will lead him to the site uh, where uh, a nest where, uh, you know, where the nest will be made. So, um, she makes the nest. So the female makes the nest. Uh, she makes the nest, um, with, um, um, small bits of plant material that's held together with a, I should be showing you the female, uh, with the, uh, with spider web. Uh, so very kind of downy like, uh, bits of the plant. Um, and uh, she weaves it while sitting in the nest. So she kind of like weaves it around herself. The nest is, they're small. These are small birds. So the nest is about an inch to an inch and a half in diameter uh, where she will lay uh, two uh, white eggs. Uh, maybe you've seen this. Now, like I said, they like, um, you know, oak in the oak woodland, they, I think they like like stronger structures for nest building. Like I said, we see them a lot in the lemonade berry. So if you have a, a lemonade berry with a nectar source nearby, this is very ideal for uh, creating a hummingbird habitat, bringing them to your yard. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Bob is on here. His, his, I believe his dad has this uh, ornamental hummingbird decoration in his yard and I think two years in a row around now Bob the humming a hummingbird has made its nest on the hummingbird <laughs> uh, yard ornament it's really really cute it's really cool I've seen uh, Bob post some pictures of that and it's um, it's very endearing it's just really cool all right I'm gonna I'm gonna time out for a second and then maybe you can see there's we have one there's one sitting there, prop, and there did its thing. So, like I said, Anna's hummingbirds zipping all around. So, anyway, so she will. The female will make the nest. She'll lay a couple of a couple of eggs, and uh, this could happen for her two or three times in a season, uh, in the nesting season, but not necessarily with the same male. So they do not form pairs, um, and they both. Uh, tend to mate, they'll mate with other individuals throughout the season. Uh, the female will not only, you know, build the nest and lay the eggs, she will sit on those eggs and she will care for the chicks. So the female really does everything. And again, you'll need something that's at least sort of, you know, maybe six feet off the ground to attract, and, they, and they'll go higher, but to attract an ideal nesting spot. Um, and it usually takes them about a week or so to do that. And uh, these birds can live a long time. I guess up to like eight years. Now, I think I, I did. So when they're, when they're going for that nectar source that you see there, those long tubular flowers, how do they get that nectar out of there? Well, 
They have a long, I don't know if you can see this, extendable tongue. Have you, have, did you know that? Have you seen that? And you might, if your eyes are good, you may actually get to see this while they are feeding. So if you can spend some time watching them, and remember they are fast, 40 to 50 beats per second. But they'll um, put out that, ex that extendable tongue to get that nectar that's deep in the uh, base of the tubular flower, which is so um, attracted to them, like almost designed for them. And here we go, there, let's see, it's back. There we go, so there's another one there. Sitting there perched, delicate balance. Now they will, uh, they, they have a high temperature, internal temperature of 107 degrees. Uh, but, and they also can get very, imagine their, their metabolism. Um, and they're just eating nectar constantly to move like that. And they, uh, if you can imagine, it's, they can get, oop, ah, maybe I should just keep it out here. <laughs> Um, ooh, I've got one behind me. Up there, maybe the ruby, um, oops, it's up in here. Maybe you can see that, there it goes. Anyway, uh, they, um, the, when they get cold, they go into this sort of, this state of, of torpor, so where they really slow down their heartbeat and, and um, um, their heart rate uh, in order to, you know, to maintain them, uh, to maintain themselves while they're cold like that. But as soon as they warm up, they're, you know, they're back to zipping around. And uh, these are, like I said, common. They're not really in, in any danger of, um, the, of their populations being lost. They've adapted well to the tropical plants and exotic plants that we've planted. Uh, historically, they bred only in Southern California and Baja, Northern Baja, but that range has extended quite a bit uh, with you know the introduction um, and of exotic plants uh, around the the West and, and and North. So, like I said, they stay in their areas. Not they don't they're not migratory, but their their range has extended uh, due to the planting of exotic plants. Now, some fun facts about them, uh, or one last fun fact, I guess, is that uh, occasionally, on a rare occasion, okay, um, and maybe because they're, you know, they're moving so fast through the air, a, an insect will get impaled on this beak. I mean, that's a pretty sharp needle-like beak or bill. And an insect, like a bee, or will get impaled. And then imagine that. So that not only the insect, that's it for the insect. It's impaled. It's stuck. But unfortunately, then the hummingbird can't open its mouth and it it starves. So apparently that's record. That's been recorded. It's happened. It's a rare occasion, but it has happened. And um, yeah, you can imagine. So be on the look at it. You know, I'm sure maybe people have been impaled when they're being territorial um, and they definitely will get close uh, when they're because uh, they're fairly I would uh, aggressive when they're they're territorial and they fly so fast so hey okay. Anna's hummingbird uh, and um, yeah they're 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 doing their thing right now so keep your eye out for them so thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Lunchtime Live. And I have some news. Uh, today is my last Lunchtime Live. I don't know if I'd be able to say that, but it's been really wonderful. And uh, maybe I'll make some guest appearances, but I've taken a position with State Parks. I'm not leaving the district. And um, I can't read the comments, <laughs> but I'm gonna be in our district office. I'm gonna be doing it in a different capacity. But um, I'll be tuning in and uh, when I can, and uh, who knows, maybe I'll be able to do a uh, guest appearance sometime in the future. So thank you so much, and have a great day. And um, I'm always available by email, so um, I'll, be, I'll be with you guys in the audience, uh, commenting and checking in. So thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of the day.